Tripware has done it again and made an incredible front end for your Raspberry Pi B3. Tripware is the developer of Blast 16. If you don't know what Blast 16 is, I don't know why. I mean, I did a freaking video on it. This time he has focused on the Super Nintendo. So if you want to turn your Raspberry Pi 3B into an SNES classic, stay tuned. In my last video about Blast 16, I mistakenly referred to Tripware as a team. That is incorrect. It is a sole person, one person working on this project, which makes this application even more impressive. Tripware recommends that you use the Pi 3B Plus. The program is called SNES Yes, or SNES ES, or SNES ES, whatever you want to call it. I spoke with Tripware about the actual pronunciation of this program, and he said he didn't really think about it, so call it whatever you want. A few key features of the program. Play SNES games in SFC or SMC format. Zip files are supported. The image is powered by RetroArch and the SNES cores. All the settings can be adjusted from the front end with a controller. There's no need to go into RetroArch to change any settings. You can do all that from the main menu. It does have Bluetooth controller support and favorite game support. There's an option to delete the games from the front end as well as save states. Once again, the amazing background music was written by Loop and Pixel, the same composer who wrote the menu music for the Blast 16 image. It is compatible with the RetroFlag Super Pi U and J cases. The rest of the features I'm going to go over with you guys in the program itself. Make sure you check out the description. I will have links to all the downloads you will need to get this working. For a complete list of all functions of this program, I recommend you go to the SNES Yes website and download the user manual. It is extremely useful, has everything you could want to know about this program. To get this running on your Raspberry Pi B3, there are three things you need. You need the program itself, the Super Nintendo box arts, and the game ROMs. The game ROMs I cannot provide for you. I can't tell you where to get them. You have to get them for yourself. You'll also need a program called Etcher to flash the image to a micro SD card. All you have to do is open up Etcher and click select image. You're going to click on the 1.0 release image and then hit open. You're going to select whatever drive you have your micro USB card plugged into and then just hit flash. There'll be two functions. It's going to start writing the data to the SD card and then it will validate that data. Now you will need a USB flash drive. On your flash drive, you're going to create a games folder. In that games folder, you will have your game ROMs and you'll have to create a box arts folder. And then of course, within your box art folder is where you'll keep your box art. There was a small cosmetic update that was made to the program. To update to 1.0.1, .1, copy everything from the update folder and paste it on the root of your flash drive. So with that update, the root of your flash drive should look like this. It's recommended you add only the box art for the games that you're going to be playing on this. And that's because when you first boot it with the flash drive, it's going to resize all the box art and change them to JPEG. And this can take a while. Once you have everything in place on your flash drive, you can safely remove it from your PC, insert it into your Raspberry Pi, and start it up. When you first boot up the program, you can see it's gonna run some code, and it's gonna copy the games and the box art from the USB drive onto the micro SD card. And as you can see here, it's now resizing all the box art and changing it from PNG format to JPEG. And there we go. Before we continue, let's listen to some of that menu music by Loop and Pixel. It is so nice and so catchy. It's got a great feel to it. I love it. It's, it works great on this menu. So here's all the games that we added booted up on the main menu complete with box art. I mentioned in the other video that you have to make sure that the box art name matches the game name exactly. The same case, the same spelling, everything has to be exactly the same for it to show up correctly. We're going to hit the start button to go into the options menu where we have settings, tool, help, credits, reboot, and shutdown. Going into settings, we have general, emulation, and input options. Under general, you have the language option, which logo to choose from between Super Nintendo and the Super Famicom. You can choose between the USA theme or the world theme. The USA theme has a different background. It cycles through a couple different purple colors and silver, just like the controller. And the world theme cycles through red, yellow, green, and blue, representative of the controllers released outside the US. For the audio output, you can select between auto, the microphone jack from the Raspberry Pi, or the HDMI output. And you can select to turn the menu music on or off. Under the emulation option, you get to choose what default emulator is selected between SNES 9X, 
2002, 2005, 2005 plus, and 2010. Auto load allows you to load from the same spot you left off in the game when you played it last. You have three different display modes with 4.3, 16x9, and pixel perfect. You also have a bilinear filter and a scanline filter. For the frame selections, you have the blue, dark purple, green, gray, light purple, red, yellow, or no frame. Under the input options, you can remap your controller, connect a different gamepad, or reset the Bluetooth cache. Under the tools option, you can select to delete games, back up your system, restore your system, resize your box arts, open RetroArch standalone, and you can open up the Raspberry Pi command line. If you're connected to the internet, you can see your IP address right below the command line. The help section gives you a QR code that you can use to email Tripware, a list of the credits, reboot will restart the Raspberry Pi, and shutdown will turn it off. On the main menu using the D-pad, you can cycle through your games pushing left and right. You can also use the L and R buttons to fast cycle through your games. Cripware stated that you can put about a thousand games on here before you start to encounter problems. It wasn't meant to hold the entire SNES library, only the games that you wish to actually play. If you look below, you can see the controller functions. A will start your game, B will load a save state, you have four save state slots that are available. Hitting the X button will mark a game as a favorite. And then for the games that you do mark as a favorite, hitting the up button takes you to the favorites menu. If you want to specify what emulator is used on a specific game, hit the Y button and you can cycle through the different S9X cores. This is useful for some ROM hacks and different compatibility games like Yoshi's Island 2 sometimes will play better depending on what emulator you select. I'm gonna boot up a couple games and see how they run. Let's start off with Street Fighter 2 Turbo. All right, looks like the game loaded up great. We're gonna turn Turbo up to three. I'm gonna pick my guy Ken. I'm going up against Zangief, this should be a breeze. No problem. The inputs are going through perfectly. The game sounds exactly like it should. And a quick throw to end this match. Let's try another game. This time we're trying out the underrated Castlevania Dracula X. A lot of people try and compare it to Castlevania 4, which had a completely different control scheme. This one is more old fashioned where, you know, you're, you're stuck with the jump that you're making. You have the knockback, things like that. And here on SNES, yes, it looks and sounds terrific. It's playing perfectly. One last game here. This is Demon's Crest, the definition of a hidden gem. This game is never talked about, and that's a real pity because it is one of the most amazing games on the system that hardly anybody has played. It's such a great mix of amazing graphics, a wonderful soundtrack, and there's so much gameplay variety here. You have different gargoyles you can play as. The replay value is just through the roof. The program also comes with a few hotkey shortcuts. If you hold down the hotkey and push up and down, you can change the volume of the game. Holding down the hotkey and pushing left and right selects what save slot to save to. The hotkey plus A will do a save state. Hotkey plus B will load save state. The hotkey and the Y button will reset your game. And the hotkey plus X will return you to the SNES Yes main menu. And that's all there is to it. Huge thank you to Tripware for another amazing program. He already outdid himself with Blast 16, and he's done the same here with SNES Yes. And that's all I got for you guys. Highly recommend you get this program. If you're a Super Nintendo fan, put it on your Raspberry Pi B3+. Plus. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Eric Cologne, Jordy Alex, William Wind, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, Dor, Red, Yaroslav Orudzov, Chuck Leah, Din Cardoso, Andre G, and Batman.